Welcome to my Aura Cascade tutorial. You can watch this tutorial from beginning to end, or you can click one of the buttons above to jump to that section of the video. Recipes may have changed according to the specific mod pack you are playing, so make sure you look up the recipes in NEI to help you out in game. To get started with this mod, you need crystals, nodes, a pump and its corresponding fuel, as well as the machine you want to power. There are many different types or colors of crystals and each has its own special quality. We are going to start with the basic white crystals. Likewise, there are many different pumps you can use that create different amounts of power and use different kinds of fuel. We are going to start with the basic burning pump that uses coal. The first machine you need to make is a cascading processor, which needs 150 power per progress. The burning pump creates 300 power per second. The cascading processor will help you create the arcane ingots needed to make other items from this mod. To begin, place the cascading processor down where you would like it. Next to it, you need to place a node. This node will be receiving the power from the other nodes and moving it to the processor. Above that node, you will need to place another node. This node needs to be within 14 blocks for them to be connected. The higher the node, the more power you will receive from Falling Aura. Beside that node, place another node, again within 14 blocks. Since it's horizontally connected, the closer they are, the more aura they can transmit. Below that, place your pump. This should create a square or rectangle and should be all connected. Once connected, aura needs to be added to the node system. You can right click or throw the crystals onto the nodes. This adds 1,000 aura per crystal to the system. Once you have the appropriate amount of aura in your system, you will need to start your pump. For the burning pump, you will need to throw a piece of coal or charcoal onto the pump. The pump will absorb it and start sending the aura upwards to the node above it. The nodes above will send aura back and forth trying to find equilibrium. The receiving node will also send aura downwards, which is what creates the power. This does not use up the aura or create aura, it only creates power. To make the arcane ingots, throw down an iron ingot along with a piece of wool the color of ingot you need. Blue wool with an iron ingot will create blue arcane ingot. Once the processor receives 60 processes of 150 power each process, your wool and ingot will combine to make the arcane ingot. The next machine you need to make is the Vortex Controller and four Vortex Pedestals. This is what you will use to create Arcane Gems. You find all the recipes you can make with the Vortex Controller in the Aura Cascade book. Arcane Gems will be used to make Arcane Prisms as well as amulets and other items. Put the Vortex Controller down where you would like it to be, then place the pedestals on each side. Above each pedestal you will need a node. You can use multiple pumps and power each pedestal individually, or you can place nodes around so they are connected to a pump and use just one. The more pumps you use, the more power you'll generate, and thus the faster it will work. Check the recipe you are using to see if it requires a specific color of aura. Arcane prisms can be made by dropping one of each of the eight color of arcane gems beside the cascading processor. There are many different colors of crystals. The white crystals are the basic plain crystals. They have white aura. This aura can be moved up, moved down, and equalizes horizontally between nodes. The green crystals create green aura. This aura weighs twice as much as white aura during the day. This means it takes twice the energy to pump the aura up, but creates twice the power when it falls. During the night, it weighs half as much, taking less energy to pump up, but creates less power moving downward. Red crystals create red aura. This aura can be moved up by exploding TNT near it. The TNT will be absorbed by the red aura, keeping it from harming blocks and pushing the aura up so it can create power. Yellow crystals will create yellow aura. This aura takes a tenth of the energy to pump up, make it easier to pump upwards and create the same amount of power as the white aura when it falls. However, yellow aura is unstable and decays quickly, making it a good short-term solution for more power. Blue crystals create blue aura. This aura is 50 times easier to pump upwards when it rains. Unfortunately, it is only half as effective when it is not raining. 
Purple crystals create purple aura. This aura slowly multiplies. The lower the amount of purple aura in a node, the faster it grows. Black crystals create black aura. This aura does not have a weight, meaning you cannot pump it up, nor does it generate power when it flows down. It also does not move horizontally. Orange crystals create orange aura. This aura does not generate power, however, it encourages other aura in nodes to flow in the same direction it is traveling. Along with different types of crystals and aura, there are different types of pumps to push the aura. The pumps push different amounts of aura and for different amounts of time. The pump you'll want to use depends on how much energy per process the machine needs. A burning pump uses coal or any burnable materials. It pushes 200 aura per second for four times the length of the time the fuel lasts in a normal furnace. A momentum pump creates power when a mob falls on or near the pump. It pushes 350 aura per second for five times the distance the mob falls. For example, a mob that falls 10 blocks will last 50 seconds. An illumination pump uses glowstone or torches within five blocks of the pump. It pushes 1,000 aura per second for 150 seconds for glowstone and 30 seconds per torch. A projectile pump creates power when a snowball, egg, or arrow is thrown at it. It pushes 1,500 aura for 300 seconds per arrow, 400 aura for 90 seconds per egg, and 200 aura for 10 seconds per snowball. The redstone pump will consume a straight line of redstone up to 15 blocks away. It pushes 1,500 aura per second for 10 seconds for the first redstone and increases in duration by 40% for each additional redstone. There are also special nodes you can use in your aura cascade systems. Conserving nodes won't send aura downwards. This is useful in tight spaces where you want the aura to move across instead of down. Aura manipulators can be black or orange. They won't accept any aura of any color other than itself. When they have a redstone signal, they will create aura of that color at the rate of 100,000 per second. Without a redstone signal, it will destroy all aura of that particular color. An aura capacitor will accept and hold onto aura until the limit is reached. Once reached, it will discharge all aura in one burst, but will not receive aura back for a short time. This is useful when a machine needs a large amount of aura for its processes. You can change the limit amount by right-clicking the node. Fluxing nodes create redstone flux for nearby machines. It will help power up to four machines within four blocks of the node. The fluxing nodes will not power energy cells, tesseracts, or your whole base. This is useful for those machines you use, but you don't want to have wired into your base energy system. There are many machines or aura consumers that consume the power created through the node system. I showed you the cascading processor and the vortex controller. The processor will also take ore blocks and grind them down into ore dust. Another important consumer you may want to make is the cascading rainbow. Place this down beside your sheep farm. This will regrow and recolor the wool on the adjacent sheep. No need for grass or to wait for the sheep to eat and regrow the wool themselves. Once the machine reaches the max processes, one sheep will grow more wool with a random color. This works well along with a processor to get those arcane ingots. The cascading smelter takes items on the ground nearby and smelts them. The cascading looter consumes power to generate items that can be found in dungeon chests. The cascading grower will help grow your plants faster. The cascading spawner will spawn a random no mob normally found in that biome once powered. The cascading brewer will take power and water bottles and create a random potion for you. The cascading synthesizer will consume a large amount of power to produce a rare material known as angel steel. This steel will be level 1. Drop three together on the ground to combine them into one level two ingot. You can keep combining them up to level 11. 
used the steel to make tools like swords, picks, axes, and shovels. Each level will apply two bonus points, which will be automatically randomly applied. The points will be from the four categories, Efficiency, Fortune, Shatter, and Disintegrate. Another consumer is called the Ritual of the Nether. This block, when powered, will turn the surrounding biome into the nether. There is also a storage bookshelf. When combined with a bookshelf coordinator and storage books, it will hold on to your items for you. It's like an applied energistic system in a bookshelf. The size of storage will depend on the type of book you place inside the bookshelf. To access the bookshelf, you will need to power the bookshelf coordinator. The last consumer is the Kaleidoscopic Enchanter. Powering it and placing a tool on top will apply six kaleidoscopic enchantments. Each affects the tool by themselves, but together they can have 40 unique effects. The last of the placeable blocks are the Rebounding Enigma and the Traveler's Bricks. Both need to be used with caution. The Rebounding Enigma, when jumped on, will toss you extremely high into the air. I crashed my game while jumping on it without a roof over my head because I flew up so high the ground disappeared. The traveler's bricks will instantly transport you to the end of the bricks. You run extremely fast to the end of the bricks and even beyond. It's a good way to get from point A to point B quickly, just be careful not to place it near a drop off, lava, or anywhere you could die. There are many things you can wear for different effects. Amulets of Protection are available in six colors. Each color grants immunity and healing from different kinds of damage. The Amulet of Forbidden Fruit will give you a random potion effect when food is eaten. The kind of potion effect depends on the type of food eaten. The Portable Red Hole will create an explosion every few seconds when it's dropped. The Portable Black Hole will remove cobblestone from your inventory. The Sword of the Thief has a small chance of stealing an item from a villager when you use it to kill the villager. The Transmuting Sword will turn one mob into another when using it on certain mobs. The last part of the Aura Cascade mod and one of my favorite parts are the fairies. You will need to start by making the Ring of Binding. This ring can be placed in a bobble slot. The ring can also hold up to 15 fairies at a time. With the fairy charm in your hand, right click and add it to the ring. To empty the ring, shift right click with the ring in your hand and your fairies will be back into your inventory. There are many different fairies, each with a unique quality. The baiter fairy summons passive mobs. The breeder fairy breeds nearby passive mobs. The Buffer Fairy gives a random positive combat, of combat effect to the player. The Debuffer Fairy will debuff all mobs in a large area. The Digger Fairy lets you dig with super speed at random times. The Extinguisher Fairy removes nearby lava and puts you out when you're on fire. The Fetcher Fairy is like having your own Magnet Fairy draw nearby items to your inventory. The Fighter Fairy will damage nearby mobs. The Glider Fairy reduces fall damage. The Lighter Fairy places temporary light sources in dark areas. The Pusher Fairy knockbacks mobs without damaging them. The Savior Fairy comes to your rescue when you're low on health to help you fight mobs. The Scarer Fairy decreases hostile mob spawns in a large area. The Shooter Fairy increases the damage dealt with arrows that you fire. The Stealer Fairy will take items held by other players and drop them on the ground, but very rarely will she do this. And the Training Fairy will occasionally drop XP orbs on the ground. I hope this tutorial has helped you understand the Aura Cascade mod. Thank you for watching and don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you found it helpful. If you would like to see more videos from me, don't forget to subscribe so you can be notified when more videos are posted. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye!